and gentlemen. Good evening. Yes. Hi, everyone. It is so great to see everyone tonight and to be together again. Welcome to Mayor Muriel Bowser's 2022 Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month celebration. You know, we celebrate every month, but we know that we get May for this national holiday. Um, my name is Un Yang, and I'm an anchor at NBC4 in Washington, D.C. Thank you very much. I am so excited to serve as your MC this evening. I am a proud D.C. resident, raising my own family in D.C. right now. All three of my children were born right here in D.C. in the same hospital my husband was born in. So it's full circle. Um, and I really, really do love this city for so many reasons. I do not have enough time <laughs> to talk about all the reasons. We have a wonderful program, so we want to get to that. But one of the main reasons I love this city so much is the diversity of people across the city and within our own Asian American and Pacific Islander community. It is just something to celebrate every day. So it's great to be here and great to see you all here tonight. Um, I just tell you that you know we've been through some tough times. So when we have moments of celebration to honor our heritage and to see some incredible performances, I think it's a great time to pause and to be together and to really understand the rich history and contributions of our community to this nation. We really are a great part of this culture and we are a part of the American history as well. Uh, the city, thank you, the city has planned a fantastic show for us tonight. So feel free to take plenty of photos this evening and be sure to share them on social media. If you do, use the hashtag DCAAPI Heritage Month. But if you can, no flash photography because we do have the performers. But again, DCAAPI Heritage Month is the hashtag. Now to officially kick off the program, please rise for a performance of the national anthem by Alexandra Palting. amazing way to kick off the program with that performance my goodness thank you so much Alexandra and of course her accompanist whose name I have to get because he was amazing too they will be performing again later in this program now it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Haran Sariki Braun the executive director of the DC Commission on the Arts and Humanities as an unwavering supporter of arts and education in schools and programs that support inclusion diversity and access in the arts Director Sariki Braun and her team at the Commission on the Arts and Humanities have been instrumental in making this event possible. So ladies and gentlemen, please give Director Sariki Braun a warm welcome. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, thank you for the generous introduction and for the wonderful performers. Um, and I can't barely see anyone in the room, but it's so good to be here with you and together celebrating community and celebrating culture. 
Um, my name is Heran Sarek Abrahan. I serve as the Executive Director of the Commission on Arts and Humanities. Um, I, I welcome uh, um, being a part of this program today. We're proud to once again be a sponsor of this uh, amazing event, the Mayor's Office on Asian and Pacific Islander Affairs Annual Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month celebration. For me, it feels a little bit like coming back home to family. I was a part of the Mayor's Office on African Affairs and working closely with Nock and, and uh, Ben Guzman later on. Uh, so it really does feel like a homecoming. Arts and culture touches us every day of our lives, whether we realize it or not. We have the excellent fortune of living in one of the most international and multicultural cities in the US, and that multiculturalism is often woven into the fabric of our daily lives. It's really one of the reasons that I've called DC home for a number of years, as most of you probably. The Arts Commission celebrates this multiculturalism and diversity because we know that it makes the district that much stronger. And so on behalf of our chair, Reggie Van Lee, all our commissioners and staff at the DC Commission on the Arts and Humanities, a couple of our staff members are here with us, our congratulations to Director Ben de Guzman and his staff on a successful Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Thank you all so much. <laughs> Thank you, Director Sariki Braun. Um, now I'd like to introduce tonight's next performers, more of a treat for us this evening. Te Pua Hio Hio means the flower that dances with the wind. They are a Polynesian dance company founded in 2003. Their aim is to respect and perpetuate the native culture of the islands in all that they do and share the spirit of aloha. Isn't that so lovely? They offer a true Polynesian dance experience that can only be achieved through years of expert training from recognized instructors from Tahiti, Hawaii, California, and Washington, D.C. Please welcome Te Pua Kio Kio.
What a beautiful performance. Thank you so much for bringing the spirit of the Polynesia halfway across the world to us here at the Lincoln Theater tonight and sharing it with us. And we will see this amazing dance troupe or halau later tonight. Um, I wanted to share with you all this evening that director Ben de Guzman will not be able to join us tonight. He was really looking forward to tonight's festivities, but yesterday he tested positive for COVID-19 and thanks to having taken all the precautions, a full round of two vaccination and a booster shot that this agency and the mayor have been pushing for. His symptoms have been mild and we anticipate him to be up and about very soon. Uh, we do want to respect his privacy while it gets better, but we send him our best wishes for a full recovery, yes. Um, just to let you know, the staff are all non-symptomatic but also fully vaccinated and boosted and the show must go on, right? So this is a reminder again from the city to get tested and get vaccinated and the booster shot if you don't have it at this point. So while we are sorry to be missing Ben this evening, we are happy to be joined by Ben's boss. So please welcome Jackie reyes Yanes to the stage. Jackie is the director of the Mayor's Office on Community Affairs, or MOCA, which is the parent organization of tonight's host office, the Mayor's Office on Asian, Pacific, Asian American and Pacific Islander Affairs, or MOAPIA. Uh, Jackie reyes Yanas has been a public servant in local district government for decades. As director, she oversees the Mayor's 13 constituency-based agencies, including MOAPIA. In the time she's been in this position, she has instituted new initiatives such as monthly meet and greets that bring MOCA agencies directly into all eight wards. She served six years as director of the Mayor's Office of Latino Affairs and has served at the Latin American Youth Center and the Mayor's Office of Community Relations and Services. Director Reyes Yanez is a proud resident of Ward 7 and first immigrated to the U.S. from El Salvador in 1990. And now that we are seeing what is hopefully a turn in the pandemic and that DC is open, Jackie and the rest of the community affairs team continue to work for the many cultures and residents that all call DC home. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Director Jackie reyes Yanis. Thank you, Ms. Chain. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone for being here tonight. I am so happy and humble in celebrating the Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month tonight. My name is Jackie reyes Janes, and I am the director of the Mayor's Office on Community Affairs, the parent organization of the Mayor's Office on Asian Pacific Islanders. Tonight, we're all Moapia. Yes. <laughs> And I have the distinguished honor of representing my mayor, your mayor, Mayor Muriel Bowser, and all of her administration here tonight. Tonight and throughout the month of May, we recognize and honor the rich culture of the heritage IIPA community and community whose heritage stems from a diverse range of countries and islands across the Asian and Pacific, each of its own language, culture, and custom, just as we, as we join that beautiful dance right now. I want to recognize and honor the ambassadors and representatives for a wide range of Asian countries and Pacific Islanders. And if you can stand up, please. We have representatives for all the, amb the ambassadors <laughs> that are here with us tonight. We are a truly multicultural city that we embrace the diversity that make us strong, vibrant, and prosperous. I'm appreciative of the work of Moabia, led by our very dynamic Ben de Guzman, who we wish a well wishes tonight for the tremendous tax and his team, for the tremendous tax in reaching out to his broad and rich community. Over the last several years during the pandemic, numerous, numerous members of our community were harassed and attacked just because of their ethnicity and scapegoats for COVID-19. DC has always been a place of inclusion and diversity, and it breaks my heart to see this violence. That is why the, Mayor, the Bowser administration continues to invest in the safety of our president. I ask each and every one of you to reject hate and show there is no place here in DC for hate. For, for our brothers and sisters from the Asian Pacific Islanders. So we have a campaign that proclaims hashtag hate stop with us. We love here in DC and we love DC values. 
Yes. Throughout the course of the pandemic, Moapia provided cultural and linguistic competence services and support for the Asian community, and I'm elated for the work that they have done and will continue to support our community. Whether you are in a boutique, a corner store owner that has been serving us for generations, or as a restaurant owner who's serving their first dish, we want you to know that you, that you belong here and you are welcome. That is why we will continue to invest in our most vulnerable resources, you. <laughs> Seeing such a diverse audience here tonight, I am excited and grateful that I get to serve and support you as a multicultural city, and I will continue to work with Mayor Muriel Bowser and to ensure diversity and inclusion in our city. By doing so, we are not only our left people, we also enrich ourselves. To the amazing performers on stage tonight, I wanna to thank you for this sharing our, yourself, your cultures, and your stories. We are also gathered here tonight to honor the amazing achievements of our community service and volunteer service awardees, and recognize the contribution that they have made to their community and to the district as whole. It is my pleasure to present you these awards. Thank you the recipients for their outstanding services. Mil gracias. Thank you, DC. And remember, tonight we are all Moapia. <laughs> Thank you. So much. Thank, you, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Director Reyes Yanes. All right, now we will be presenting the 2022 Mayor's Community Service Award and the Ajay Oja Volunteer Service Award. So each year, the Commission on Asian and Pacific Islander Affairs solicits nominations from the community for groups or individuals that have made extraordinary contributions to the district's AAPI community. The Mayor's Community Service and Volunteer Service awardees were carefully selected by the Commission and then approved by the Mayor. I'd also like to invite Commissioner Nir Adhikari to join Director Reyes Yanes on the stage now as we recognize this year's award winners. So come on up, thank you. All right, our recipient of this year's Community Service Award is Martha Watanabe. So if you have been a part of the local AAPI community scene, this award should come as no surprise and is long overdue. Martha has been a key figure, uh, but an unsung hero within the DC AAPI community since she arrived over 30 years ago. In fact, the very commission that nominated her for this distinguished honor tonight was co-founded by her in 1986. So talk about coming full circle. In her decades-long career, she found time to be part of groups including the Asian Pacific American Institute for Congressional Studies, OCA Asian Pacific American Advocates, the Japanese American Citizens League, which I'm told she was part of since she was 16, and so many more. Uh, to say that Martha influenced DC AAPI community groups is like saying AAPI people like boba tea. I mean, I love boba tea. I can't speak for everyone, but I love it. <laughs> a massive understatement indeed. She has been so impactful in her service. She never garnered many highlights but, or headlines, but if you received a note of support from her in the morning before a big conference, perhaps a pearl of wisdom about a problem that you may have been having, you have felt her influence, her care, and her impact. Um, suffice to say that all would not be celebrating here tonight if not for her. So everyone, please give her a round of applause to the Mayor's Community Service Award recipient for 2022, Martha Watanabe. And take a picture too. Look at me. <laughs> Congratulations. So please stand the stage a little um, later for a group photo. It's Martha, so don't go too far. Um, the commission reserves this next award for exceptional individuals who demonstrate outstanding volunteer service. The Volunteer Service Award is presented in honor of Ajay Oja, a former commissioner who passed away by volunteering in Guatemala on a community service project for local youth.
This year's Ajay Oja Volunteer Service Award recipient is Si Ming Chen. <laughs> si is one of the many smiling faces you will see when you first enter the historic Wallach House. Uh, this unassuming man would most likely be seen carrying groceries for residents who need help or taking orders from other seniors in the home or calling Moapia to get assistance for another resident. Um, behind that friendly smile is a man who goes above and beyond for his community. And thanks to his leadership, C and the Wallach House Tenants Association were able to band together and ensure that a vulnerable population was able to keep their homes. And it's such, such an important thing to do in this time. Um, Wallach House now stands as a pillar of affordable housing here in the district. Um, in 2019, his efforts were recognized by the DC Office of Human Rights, and he was awarded the Advocate Achievement Award. Now to recognize his amazing achievements and his continued efforts in protecting and supporting a vulnerable community, please join me in congratulating the Ajay Oja Volunteer Service Recipient of 2022, Si Ming Chen. <laughs> Awesome, 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 awesome. Thank you so much. And before we move on to the next segment, I would like to honor our very own Anne Shan, whose contribution to the local community through the journalism and culture should be recognized. In 2002, Anne Shan started her career in NBC4 after cutting her teeth at WUS9 at the National Geographic Channel. Over the course of her career, she covered the history of the culture of DC by meeting residents and sharing their stories. In between her full-time career and being a full-time parent, as she told us that she is a product from DC. <laughs> we know, we know. Surprise, that's how Mr. Bing, Director Guzman does it. You know, <laughs> Ella found, found her time to give back to her community by being a mentor for the district youth and acting as alumni leader in her alma mater, University of Maryland, and volunteer at events such as ours tonight. And she's doing a wonderful job. <laughs> now, 20 years later, but she looks 16, <laughs> you know? Now, 20 years later, Ms. Ewan inspires other AIP students and youth much unlike her own and to her own journalist hero, Connie Chan. We would like to congratulate you with a letter of thanks from Mayor Muriel Bowser and play a short clip of Ms. Ms. Ewan's story, career prepared by NBC4. But I would like to say, to present this on behalf of our oh Fierce leader, Mayor Maria Bowser. And congratulations, Anne Sean. May 10th, as a mayor of Washington, D.C., I am pleased to extend my heartfelt gratitude to Anne Sean of NBC Washington for serving in, uh, as an MC of tonight's AAP Heritage Month celebration and congratulate you for 20 years, it's easily said, in broadcasting at NBC Washington a celebrated awarding winning journalist whose career spans from her youth to her present, ancient while, while a toddler, will emulate reporters on television and try to mimic their speech and behaviors. She looked up to another amazing DC Asian American Pacific Islander journalism, Connie Chan. Having such a prestigious role, role model and, and resolved resolve to follow her famous footsteps, much to to the her chagrin of her parents. <laughs> in college, Ian worked at the University of Maryland's college broadcast station program while also moonlighting as a production assistant at WS9. Her talent and perseverance paid off, and she went on to assist in an on-air role after six years with WSA, WSA9 and move over to the Freedom National Geographic Channel in where she get to travel around the world and develop her keen skills. Thank you. Once again, I join the nearly 
700,000 residents of Washington, D.C. Thank you, you, oh, for goodness. your efforts and congratulations over the 20 years in NBC Washington. Oh, my goodness. I am so shocked. You are a Washingtonian. I am a Washingtonian. <laughs> this is so Oh my goodness. Um, I, you know, I so was here I think, to MC. But I think we need, we need to play the video. Oh, there's a video too. Oh my goodness, there's more. <laughs> it was 2002 when An Yang joined the NBC4 team. She was new to us, but many in the Washington area already knew her. See, Un is the definition of a hometown girl. She grew up in Montgomery County and went to school at the University of Maryland, and now she's raising her family like here. Kids now. When you find a place you love, stick with it. Un started in local news at Channel 9. Then she reported for National Geographic. That assignment took her all over the world, but Un missed home and reporting on her community. So she came home, this time to NBC4. Un Yang, News 4 today. Oh my goodness Her gracious. first assignment was to report for the 11 o'clock news, but our bosses noticed her personality uh, and charisma and put her on the anchor desk. In Tokyo, Over these 20 Un years, Un has the covered Olympics two Olympic Games, Korea, hosted our Asian American heritage specials, and told some beautiful stories about people in our community. You might have even seen her in the community, speaking at events, and being a mentor to students and aspiring journalists. Through it all, Un has been a good friend to all of us in her NBC4 family, and to those of you who get up early to watch. We've all watched Un and her husband Robert start a family. All three of her kids were born during her time at NBC4. My mama. We've mm. also watched Un mm. eat and eat <laughs> and eat. She's eaten at just about every restaurant in town. Oh Un is the quintessential foodie, and anyone lucky to be in her orbit knows it. So, Un, as we toast your 20 years at NBC4, let's find that perfect glass of wine and a delicious piece of cake to celebrate you. Oh, yes. Now you did. <laughs> I, I really am so surprised. You know, I came here to be the MC, not to receive this recognition, but uh, thank you to the mayor and to the Moapia office and the other offices, Director Reyes Yanis and everyone here uh, for joining me in the mornings. It's very early, but there is an intimacy in morning news because I know you are getting ready for your day, you're making your cup of coffee, you are getting your kids ready and your families ready. And that time in the morning is a special time. It's hectic, but and I feel like we share that together. And so when people tell me that I feel like I know you and I feel like you're my family, well, that's the highest compliment because you do know me because what you see up there is who I am for real. Um, I do love this city. I love serving the community. I love being a part of it and the stories that I do are meaningful because I truly care about them, because I care about the people. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. I'm really <laughs> surprised and uh, speechless. My cheeks are, I'm smiling so much, you know. Um, thank you, and this, I love this so much. Okay, thank you, thank you. So, so lovely um, and very appreciated. Well, you know, and I never take, um, I never take my job for granted, that's for sure, and relish the time I get to spend in the community as well. So again, thank you, really special. All right, so let's move on because we're gonna have another performance. We're excited about that, everyone. All right. Um, you have already seen this next performer, but I want to introduce you a little bit more. Alexander Palting is a multidisciplinary singer, songwriter, and performer. I mean, you saw the vocals already, uh, who can be heard at theaters, churches, and concert venues across Washington, D.C. She is currently the 2022 artist in residence at the Kennedy Center. I mean, that's a big deal, yes. Um, highlights of her regional theater career include engagements at the Olney Theater Center, Imagination Stage, the Keegan Theater, and most recently in the Labor Heritage Foundation and working in DC's celebratory performance of working at Black Lives Matter Plaza. Her career as a classical singer has taken her from Baltimore to the Vatican. Please help me welcome back to the stage, Alexandra Palting. As a girl who holds the world at an arm's length away 
January 9, 1962 is a humid, busy evening at Manila International Airport. At 6 o'clock p.m. Filipino time, so 6 o'clock a.m. American time, an airplane trots from gate to runway. Nose to the sunrise, it passes a crowd where some men watch, some children wave, some women weep. One won't. She is my Lala. She is 19 years old, a city girl and a singer. She scans the plane's windows until she sees a man. He is a newly graduated doctor, a province boy from central Luzon on a mission to earn American money to send home to his family. This is what it means to be the man of the house. But he has never flown before. And he sits stiff at his window seat sweating through his suit. He wills the impossibly heavy plane forward. Forward. Faster. Faster. Up. 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 Clouds become stars. Stars become sun. And sun becomes Snow, snow as far as the eye can see when all his eyes have ever known is sand. Until then, wake up and grind. On a ring, my lover hangs her hopes. Her promise heavy on my chest. I told her soon I will be back. I'll be back. I'll be back. The new world says you ain't seen nothing yet. Three years later, I watched as my own fiance boarded a plane heading 3,000 miles west for five years. When he left, my Lala came over with an H Mart bag filled to the brim with old papers, letters that she and my Lolo wrote to each other from opposite sides of the world. At the beginning of the first letter, she wanted to be a nun. And at the end of hundreds and hundreds of letters, she left the Philippines and everyone and everything she loved for him. She immigrated to take a chance on love. Do human beings really change that much? Will he? Will I? After half a decade apart, will we still be the people we promised to wait for? I'm so tired 
1962 comes after 1961 until I found myself with 874 letters. And their contents taught me that my grandparents did change. What I was reading wasn't just a love story, but a coming of age. This is a story about two kids falling in love, but it's also about how they became adults by fighting for it. I will wait for you. I will never let you go. I will come for you. You will never be Unearthing my grandparents' story of love and immigration taught me that to grow up is to welcome change, to embrace contradictions, Filipino and American identity, fact and memory, to know you are loved even when alone, to believe and to love. It's time to put one foot past the other. It is time to leave this island, though in body Take a chance on another May this faith move mountains Cross the ocean Land among the stars These letters are just the start I will wait for you Grandmother was the daughter of a successful Spanish businessman raised on a rolling estate. But for their first few years married in this country, all my grandparents could afford to eat were hot dogs in their cramped apartment. Lala should have been married in the Philippines, surrounded by everyone she knew and loved. Instead, she sewed her own dress, married my Lolo before a priest and two witnesses, and they couldn't be happier. It's time to let a new chapter begin If you want these broken pieces Who am I to oppose? It's time to let someone to win and they're raining It's time to sweat for something Bleed for no one Trust but not obey Come love, come joy, come pain
tonight. I'm getting married in four days from today, yeah. <laughs> to that boy who left, thank you. <laughs> when my Lala brought me her story, I thought that love was about safety. I thought that the one was supposed to keep you safe from the world using their broad shoulders to shield you from life's spray. But instead, I learned that if safety was the goal, I never would have gotten anything worth having and never made anything worth sharing. 874 letters taught me that love doesn't make you safe. Love makes you strong. and kids They are with me as I take a step Just a step, one more step Into a world of which we've only dreamed For my feet I'll pave a path of hope I'll make my hands hair on the line. Claps. You won't believe your eyes. What a talent. I mean, it was stirring and beautiful and powerful and uh, so proud to have her as part of this community. And can we also give a round of applause for Isaiah Shim, who was her pianist tonight, too? So, Alexandra and Isaiah, thank you very much. Um, before we move on to our next performance, Moapia has prepared a small segment to remind us all that AAPIs contribute to the diverse fabric of the district no matter what their culture or background. Ladies and gentlemen, this is home. Asians and Pacific Islanders represent about 5% of the population here in the district. And so they cut across different nationalities, different immigration statuses, different generations. And so kind of wherever you are in the district, you are never too far away from someone in the Asian American and Pacific Islander community probably doing something really interesting. is Jeannie Bauman and I teach Dunya. It's a Bollywood workout class. I love that we get people who've been dancing their whole life and then we also have folks who, you know, just want to come in and get a good workout and they want to dance and have a good time. And, and so we have folks from all ages, all backgrounds. And I love that there's this sort of dance and music that can bring people together, just having fun and building a community. The AAPI community have come to the district from places far and wide. My name is Alvinia and I grew up in Colorado. My name is Daniel Phoenix Singh. We left India because opportunities were slim there and a lot of my friends were moving into DC and it felt like the right place to be. In 2010, uh, I met Alvina in Hawaii and I decided that, hey, uh, I have an opportunity at work to move to the D.C. area and uh, to be with her, so I did. So you chased a girl. I did. <laughs> I want us to be that place that surprises you. You know, that like, oh, this is a place where I can lay down roots. I'm a queer South Asian, and it was really a place where I found my family. Um, it really gave me a sense of home. 
This is Arman Phoenix Lila Singh. He's my son, and his sister is uh, Meharunisa Violet Madhvi Singh. They're twins, they're five months old. This is our home. It's a great place to live. All of our friends are here. You know, it's such a diverse neighborhood, diverse city. You know, why? Why would we move anywhere else? Yeah. People in my community are writers, strong will, and they have lots of affection. I think that there's some unexpected aura or feeling that you get in D.C. where you feel like you should be engaged in one way or another. My name is Steve Park. I am the founder and executive director of Little Lights Urban Ministries. And we're a nonprofit organization that serves uh, public housing students and families uh, in Washington, D.C. Steve looks very different from the people that he serves. Once in a once in a blue moon, I do get asked, like, you know, are you here delivering the Chinese food, right? <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> we do a lot of after-school tutoring, a lot of one-to-one -one tutoring and reading and math. We have a one-to-one -one mentoring program. We have a kids' choir. We have family center for adults to get access to jobs and employment, as well as a landscaping social enterprise. So there are a lot of moving pieces. There's a lot of programs at Little Lights. But I think what brings it all together is, is compassion. Great things about being around a long time and being in the same community for a long time is you do get to, to watch kids in your program grow up. I have been involved with Little Lights for over 20 years, so longer than I can remember. Steve used to come uh, pick us up in a van at Potomac Gardens and take us to church on Sundays. We got meals like food and um, just a, the chance to just be a kid without having to worry about anything else. These kids are beautiful. These kids have so much potential, um, but they need support. They need that extra help. And I think that's what kept me coming back. It definitely set an example of what service means. And now I'm a program coordinator here at Little Lights. You know, there's the narrative that we are the Korean owners of the bodega, but the population here is really engaged in our communities. I think for immigrants, there's always trying to find the balance of like where you came from or where you were born and then being present where you are and, and loving and where you're raising your kids. It means so much to me that I got a tattoo representing the DC flag, Colorado where I'm from, and Hawaii where I lived and met Jeff. I just love DC. There's a lot of great things here, so yeah. This is definitely home. Well done, and so what a wonderful representation of the city and all the good things going on in the city, the incredible people who are working to make the city better. Uh, it just makes me so proud to be a DC resident, to be a part of the Asian American community. So thanks for that video. Um, now we have a wonderful performance by the musical duo Dong Shi. Dong Shi is a musical collaboration between Chinese dulcimer virtuoso Chao Tian and world percussionist Tom Teasley. So they use improvisation, improvisation to create an effective musical dialogue between East and West and are dedicated to bridging China and the United States with music. music universal language, of course. Uh, Chao Tian is a Chinese dulcimer virtuoso, improviser, sound designer, and visual artist. Chao has performed in over 30 countries and regions across the globe and collaborated with a number of talented musicians on many unprecedented projects. And Tom Teasley is a multidimensional performer and composer, crossing the boundaries of solo performance through the use of instruments from around the world and techniques from diverse traditions and combining ancient percussion with digital technology. So cool. So please welcome the world class performers, Dong Shi. <laughs>
ladies and gentlemen, wasn't that incredible? Dong Shi, Chao Tian, and Tom Teasley, thank you so much. All right, we have reached the end of the evening. It's been so wonderful that we have a final performance now of the evening. We want to welcome back to the stage Te Pua Hio Hio. The last dancer doing this song is Ori Tahiti. It is a celebration of the power and beauty of Tahitian dancing. Hula hula mai e. Another round of applause for Te Pua Hio Hio and all our wonderful performers this evening and our esteemed guests. I hope everyone enjoyed tonight's program and of course being here at the historic Lincoln Theater and being together in person once again and of course to our awardees this evening. Congratulations once again and thank you for your continued service to the city. Um, it is invaluable and I know uh, I can speak for the citizens and the people who are part of the Asian American Pacific Islander community how important your work is and how we appreciate all that you do for our city. So thank you to both C and Martha, I appreciate it so much. Um, again, I want to thank Moapia and Mayor Bowser for hosting the celebration this year. Um, as our speakers have mentioned, the AAPI community in DC is quickly growing and really around the nation, the Asian American Pacific Islander community is the fastest growing uh, group here in the United States. We need more spaces and programs and people to highlight the unsung heroes, the champions, the people who are working behind the scenes, but who also need to be put in the stage, in the spotlight, to talk about the talents and their contributions. Um, we see in, from all different walks of life and fields, uh, we saw amazing arts and service and so many different contributions. In that video, we showed that this is a place where people raise their families and build a life. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again. Thank you for being here this evening. We hope to see you soon. Have a great night. I'll be on in the morning. So I know I've all you been <laughs> watching NBC4 bright and early. Get home safely. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>